Hello, this course covers the key steps to adopting agile development in your API program. From our combined experience at Google, the first start to any adoption is a mindset shift. Agile software development just makes sense. And if you've been through traditional waterfall development, you know about the big handovers, big team silos, and difficulty in collaborating and plan change. The values and principles espoused in this manifesto were derived and underpin a broad range of software development frameworks, but primarily seek to solve the root causes of the software development in Waterfall. The term Agile was popularized by the Manifesto for Agile Software Development. Take a moment to read through it and visit their website. Agile can be adopted in many different software settings within the digital value chain for our course. We focus on the Agile method of developing APIs by the API team. A core part of Agile is to have one cross-functional API team. This means the API team should be largely self-sufficient with as few dependencies as possible. Here's what the Agile API team would look like. The core API team is in the middle with one team made up of the API product owner, API developers, QA engineers, and Scrum Master in the inner ring. They are constantly working together. The outer ring represents also core team members who may not be fully dedicated to the API team and might be partially allocated over time to support multiple API teams. The role of connecting with non-core team members are represented with arrows showing specific individuals who should take ownership of these key activities. We explore each one of the roles and relationships in depth throughout this course. For teams starting out with Agile, one of the biggest pitfalls is taking on too much scope. A great way to adapt to changing plans is to reduce the size of each software scope implement. Developing software in a new way can be difficult for inexperienced teams. So a smaller scope is even more ideal for them. Size the scope of your API project right and focus on the minimum viable product. Ask your team, what is the least we need to build that will still deliver business value? The picture here shows three different ways to build a transport device over four releases with the business goal of getting from point A to point B. The first example should be avoided, which is building incrementally. After each release, there's no business value since we only get from point A to B until the very end in release four. The second example is better. It achieves the goal of getting from A to B in each release with a working device, but it forces the team to rework the product in every release, leading to a lot of waste and throwaway effort. The third example is the MVP approach. We can transport from A to B in each release, but we have minimal rework since we're built on top of the previous release's functionality in a smart sequence. You can think of Agile API development in just this way. Deliver the right MVP and pay close attention to the sequence you are releasing your new APIs. To be really efficient, it's not enough to release often, but to release with quality and with the least amount of effort. Instead of writing test cases after development is complete, write the test cases and define the success criteria upfront in design before the development starts. This practice comes in two flavors test-driven development, and behavior-driven development. Both are very similar and achieve the same outcome. Both methods output code that can then be automated by QA engineers who can string together a series of unit tests and tests written through TDD or BDD to becoming integration-level tests for the API. By writing test cases that are programmable scripts, we can run the tests over and over again taking a huge load off the traditional QA bottleneck and makes turnarounds on the QA feedback loop incredibly fast. For more information about testing, refer to the QA strategy course later on this series. The principle of automation is quality is an essential part of Agile transformation. No other practice represents this better than setting up a continuous integration and continuous deployment pipeline. This shortened acronym is CICD. 
The main goal is to prevent integration hell, where multiple developers begin integrating large chunks of code near the later phases of the project. To avoid this drama, the picture to the left illustrates a recurring cycle from code check-in to testing to deployment of the API bundle to updating the API documentation. The purpose to do this cycle on a frequent basis or even on a per-code commit basis. By using software like Jenkins and programming to move code from each one of these steps, this process can be largely automated. This reduces human effort and increases the frequency that this cycle is run so that errors are caught early, starting from the first week of coding. This practice of mastering the CI-CD pipeline is essential in adopting Agile development. Now that we have a good grasp of the fundamental strategies and tactics of adopting Agile, let's discuss the process of implementation. Here's the familiar waterfall process, long release, with lengthy stages and big handover points, often from one team to another, with risk and unknowns unsurfaced until we get into that particular stage. You've probably been through it and have some pretty interesting stories to tell. Teams that move away from Waterfall have a tendency to move into Scrumfall. It breaks the work into sprints and starts testing cycles early on so it helps the team pivot and provide early visibility to progress. However, because testing is separated as a post-sprint activity and not included during requirements definition and sprints, testing and bug fix time is elongated and long release cycles invariably happen. If you have large scope that you can't break apart, this is still better than waterfall. However, with API development and most software development, we can definitely go further than Scrumfall. The first important tactic to avoid Scrumfall is to merge development and QA into one sprint. This likely means you will take on less work in the sprint to give time for bug fixing. But with testing and fixing merged into the sprint, you've tested and ready for to release functionality at the end of each sprint. This gives us the real ability to pivot. Make this your first goal for the team. Just testing furiously during development isn't enough. We need to incorporate the principle of definition of quality upfront. If developers are not fully aware of the test criteria, or QA engineers have to spend more of their time defining the test criteria in the sprint, precious time will be wasted in the sprint. Have the QA engineers and the developers work with the requirements to define the test criteria ahead of the sprint. This can be done using test-driven development method or the behavior-driven development we spoke about earlier. Go as far as having the test scripts coded so that the QA engineers are just making minor modifications in the sprint itself. With testing definition brought up in between requirements and sprints, your last step is to automate the CI-CD pipeline. Don't shortcut or give up on laying down the foundation for automation, testing, and optimizing the team's process. With time, your team will come to trust the process as the testing begins to speed up development and quality. Now that we have a higher level approach down, let's dive a bit deeper into the Agile process. There are two common variant processes in Agile, Scrum and Kanban. Please take a moment to read the descriptions. While Scrum has more processes with more steps to take into account, the cycle of development is more familiar to many teams and more friendly for new teams being formed. Kanban, although easy to pick up, relies on work that are smaller chunks of effort and less dependent on other work. Teams that have been working well together who can really self-manage and agile may be better at picking up Kanban. For the purpose of this course, we will focus on Scrum given its complexity and higher rates of adoption. Whichever process you pick, commit to it. Don't switch back and forth until you really feel like the team has lived and learned through that process. Since the Scrum process can be quite complex, we're going to step through this process one at a time. A product owner is the starting point at step one. It all begins with a vision. From this vision, we develop an API roadmap. This should be a high-level scope of the components needed to achieve this vision and deliver value for the organization. This roadmap could include different sets of APIs, business adoption, apps usage, key compliance efforts, 
infrastructure, and even improvements to the developer portal. With a product roadmap focused on what will be the first valuable release, keep in mind the MVP principle. Now that you have the scope of your first release, it should be quickly turned into a ranked list of requirements in step two. These requirements are written in the form of epics and user stories. Often at this point, the habit is to go into a lot of requirements detail. Don't. Instead of going deep, list all the high-level features and requirements. If you're spending more than a week on this, you're likely going too deep. Step three is where most of the recurring action process happens. The API team will select the most important user stories to work on for the coming sprint. The user stories have to be fully flushed out with business, technical, and testing details. The API team will review each user story, break down the activities into tasks needed to build this user story, estimate the effort, and commit to a set of user stories for the next sprint. Each sprint can be one to four weeks in length, but we often see teams settle on two weeks as the happy medium. At the end of the sprint, the user story should be completed and ready for go live. Anything not finished will be carried over to the next sprint or placed back to the product backlog. This sprint cycle repeats itself again. Throughout the sprint cycle, the Scrum Master is the coach and tracks the team's productivity through burn down and burn up charts to measure the team's progress in the form of velocity. We will cover velocity later in this course. In addition to tracking progress, several ceremonies are core to Scrum. These key ceremonies are listed in steps four, five, and six. In step four, the daily Scrum is a daily 30-minute activity where each member talks about the progress they made, their tasks for the day, and any blockers. This is the time for the team to take the pulse of the progress and drive action and ask for help. In step five, a sprint review, also known as the sprint demo, occurs at the end of the sprint. It's generally meant to recap what has been built and provides a moment to celebrate and to publicize the achievements of the team. In step six, the sprint retrospective is a ceremony also at the end of the sprint. The teams come together to self-reflect on what went well and what could be improved. Oftentimes, the best improvements come from a team retro. One area of confusion we encounter is what happens in between the steps from product backlog to finish work. The ceremonies are fairly easy to understand, but the sequence can be a bit tricky to visualize. Let's unpack this a bit more. Taking another view of a sprint by sprint, you will see a repeating pattern where the product backlog items are refined prior to the start of development. This repeating effort is called backlog refinement. A team process that is usually established in the beginning of the project is called the definition of ready. This checklist is the agreement within the team of when a story is refined enough for the developers and the QA engineers to start the sprint. Thus, this is a clear target for even the team members doing refinement on how far they need to go to meet the definition of ready. Refinement is a collaborative activity. It's very important that the product owner, API architect, and QA engineer all focus on the same set of user stories in the priority order of the backlog. After they are done with refining S1, they move on to S2 and refine that set. This continues until the backlog is all refined. Once a set of user stories in Sprint 1 is refined, sprint planning starts as either a recurring activity before the sprint in small chunks or one larger session at the first activity of the sprint. The output of sprint planning is a full set of tasks per user story. With this, the team goes to work on development and test scripts, writing and execution. This process continues iteratively in Sprint 2, 3, and so forth. The team also needs to set the definition of done for a user story at the start of the project. This is the line for the team to draw in terms of the standard of finish and quality that should be adhered to. This way, there's no misunderstanding at the end of the sprint when a user story is marked done. It's up to the team as a whole to enforce this standard. In the last step, finished work can be queued for product release and bundled in the release per sprint. 
The automated CI-CD pipeline helps the last leg of process quickly flow from test and approved code into the main branch. We cover a ton of concepts and strategies in this course. To summarize, create cross-functional teams and close the ties between IT and business. Avoid legacy and waterfall processes so you can deliver smaller scope and pivot on a regular basis. Always look for ways to automate and reduce any big handovers. Use methods like behavior-driven development and concepts like definition of ready and definition of done to build quality into the process and align the teams on a shared expectation. Don't worry, you won't get it perfect on day one. Use the feedback loops like the sprint ceremonies to take feedback and optimize. Every Agile team will tailor their process over time. If there's one more last principle of Agile to remember, it is about continuous improvement. That's your North Star. I hope this course has helped you get a firmer grasp on transforming into an Agile development team. If you want more information, please check out the community for eBooks, articles, and other related topics.